This is the Bentrup TC66 controller, made in Germany. Fabulous machine. It comes, we sell it, with a 7-pin Harting socket and 3 metres of cable. Very useful to have a long cable on your controller so that you can mount the controller on the wall, away from the kiln, away from the heat and in a convenient place for you to get it to. A nice Harting socket which you can plug into the kiln if the controller ever goes wrong, simple for you to disconnect, then you can save money by posting the controller back to the manufacturer yourself. They all speak perfect English, of course. And within a week, you'll get your controller back fully fixed. So much simpler and cheaper than sending it back to whoever you bought it from originally. You'll save yourself a load. So we plug it in. This is a little simulator that represents the kiln. Turn the controller on at this little rocker switch on the underside. It then checks itself out with the reference to the pin to the chip it's got in it, and then it'll show temperature in the kiln. This controller has six programs. To get a program up, you press the program button, the P button, P1. And each one represents a program, and it just goes round in a big circle. So if you missed the one you wanted, keep on going round the circle until you get the one you want. Now the manufacturer has put in, initially, on manufacture, a range of programs, but I don't think they're much good. So I normally put in, when I install a controller, four or five programs to suit the customer, and uh, we'll show you what I put in now. P1, I normally put in as a drying program. Now, the controller is, oper is operated by the single selection of buttons. If you press the nine o'clock, it will move the program to the left. If you press the three o'clock, it'll improve the, move the program to the right. At each section, you can change the the setting by pressing the plus up and the minus down. So logically you go back to the beginning of the program, move it to the left. The first thing option it gives you is a dwell time, uh, a delay time before it starts. There are three little lights beneath the main display showing you the unit that this is in. This is showing H for hours, so this is a time. But the second button is a C per H, which is a speed, centigrade per hour. Or the third light is centigrade, so that is just a temperature. So we are right at the beginning of the firing, and it's asking us if we want to have a delay before it starts. If we did, we can press the plus and take it up to anything up to 10 hours delay time but we'll want it to start immediately, so we'll bring it back to zero. Go to the right for the first ramp, and the ramps are infinitely variable. You can put anything in you like. Now, P1 we're going to have as a drying program, so this isn't, this isn't firing, this is drying a wet pot. This is when you haven't got the time to allow nature to do its own business, and you want to do it rapidly. So if you bring the speed down to 10 centigrade per hour, that should dry the pot up, the pot out slow enough so that it doesn't crack. 10 degrees an hour up to 150 degrees. By this temperature all the water should have evaporated without bursting the pot because you've gone up so slowly. The second ramp you can skip, we don't need it because the top temperature is going to be anyway 150 degrees. There's no point in having a dwell because we've gone up so slowly and the cooling we just want the kiln to switch off and so we have skip up there. So this is our program for P1 drying program immediate start going up at 10 degrees an hour to 150 so that's 15 hours. Skipping on the second section we don't need it Top temperature is 150, so it's 15 hours total firing time. No dwell and cooling naturally. 
To get this in the program, all we need to do is to press the start button. Now it's in the memory. And if we switch off and come back to it in a year's time, P1 will still be that drying program. P2, I'm going to switch off because I want to now change the program. The, red, the green light will change to red and now it's ready for reprogramming for P2. Press the P button twice, there is P2. P2 I normally put in as a very slow biscuit for the big chunky sculptural pieces that you might make. Immediate start in this case, but you can put a delay in. We're now going to go up at a slow speed so that your big chunky item hopefully won't break. 30 degrees centigrade per hour, that middle light is on. Up to an intermediate temperature of 600. So this first ramp is going to be very slow and it will take 20 hours for the kiln to reach 600. Now at 600 the inside of the kiln is just beginning to glow red hot. The chemical changes have taken place and so the second ramp you could have a skip, it could, but since you paid for an expensive controller, then you might as well go up at a controlled rate. So whether you've got the kiln hardly full or full up to the brim, it will still go up at the same speed. And I would normally put in for the second ramp 100 degrees an hour. 100 degrees an hour up to your top temperature. Now always when selecting your temperature for your biscuit firing, ask yourself what you're going to do next. If you're wanting to dip, you need a porous pot, so biscuit fire at a thousand or thereabouts. If you're going to brush on the glaze, what you need is a higher temperature so that you have a nice, hard, less porous surface to, where your brush will flow across. 1100 will be ideal. If you're going to do a single firing, because you don't want to glaze it, then you need to vitrify the clay. 1100 will be probably all right for a earthenware clay, but if you want to vitrify a stoneware clay, then biscuit fire to 1200. Or if you're going to do, say, porcelain, and you don't want to glaze it, so it's, this is the only firing it's going to have, and you've made the item thin enough, now you want it translucent with porcelain, probably pop it up to about 1230. So you've got a selection of top temperatures for your biscuit firing, always dependent on what you're going to do next with that pot. Now, that's where we got to, I can't remember. 100 degrees an hour for your second ramp. Uh, let's say 1000 for your top temperature and a dwell of 30 minutes. 30 minutes is pretty much standard for all types of firing. This allows the whole kiln to get to temperature and if you're glazing, for the glaze to flow, bubbles to come out and a nice gloss to develop. The cooling is normally that you want the kiln to just switch off and cool as rapidly as possible and so you'll have skip in here. But if you wanted the kiln for some reason to cool at a, a slower rate, then you can put in a cooling ramp, just like you had a controlled speed going up, you can have a controlled speed going down. But don't forget the kiln hasn't got a refrigeration unit, so you can't speed the cooling up. All you can do is to slow it down. And some people will want to cool deliberately at a much slower temperature. But normally you'll have the controller on skip so then you press the top 12 o'clock plus button and up comes skip. So now the kiln will just switch off. Right, P3 I normally call my standard biscuit firing. I press the P button to bring up P3. I've got to bring the kiln back to the, the controller back to the beginning so that it's a logical sequence, immediate start, going up now at 60. I would take up a standard biscuit firing at 60. 
There's nothing magical about 60, it's just that the arithmetic is simple, it's easy on the memory. 60 degrees represents a degree per minute and it will get up to the intermediate temperature, 600, in 10 hours. So why choose something more complicated when the 60 is simple to remember and to calculate the time of the firing? 600 is your intermediate temperature, then the second section can be the same as the P2 which is 100 degrees an hour, equally easy to do any calculations of how long the firing is going to take. And select the top temperature according to what you're going to do next, as we've just spoken about. Let's say we're going to do a dipping glaze and we need a porous pot. Thirty minute dwell so that everything in the kiln gets nicely to temperature. And skipping on the cooling, in other words, the kiln just switches off. That's your third program, and to get it into the memory, press the start, and now she's in. Right, now we've done P1 as a drying program, P2 and 3 as a slow and a standard biscuit, P4 I'm going to put in as an earthenware glaze firing. So, press the P button until you get up P4, move the controller back to the beginning of the firing by pressing the 9 o'clock button, and here we are at the delay, 0 because we want it to start immediately, move to the first section. So this is a glaze firing, I can go up a little bit gently for the first few hundred degrees just to dry off any moisture that might have accumulated during the, um, the decorating process. 100 degrees centigrade an hour until it gets to 200. So press the down. When it gets to 200 then you can really speed up. If you want to you can go at full speed which is indicated by skip. It will now go on at full power straight on up. But if you want to go up in a controlled manner, so whether the kiln is fully filled or only half filled or nothing in it at all, you can go up at a controlled speed, which I think is preferable. Since you have paid so much for this controller, you might as well use all its facilities. So for the second section, I go up at 200. Nothing magical about 200, it's just easy to remember. 200 degrees an hour, until it gets to the temperature that the glaze manufacturer has recommended. And for bots earthenware, that's 1040, or maybe if you want to economise, it can be 1040. Uh, you might be able to get away with 1030. Always choose the lowest temperature, which gives you, gives you the best results, because then that will save you money. 30 minutes soak, so that the glaze flows, nice gloss develop, and once again skip on the cooling, which in this case means kiln switches off. To get that into the memory, we press plus, we press go, and that's in the memory. Switch off. And now we can try the last program for, let's say, a stoneware glaze firing. Exactly the same as the one before, except the top temperature is much higher. Immediate start, going up at 100. to 200, two hundred degrees an hour on the second ramp, don't worry if you overshoot, everybody does unless you've got fighter pilots reactions, up to the stoneware glaze temperature that the manufacturer recommends, which will round about be 1250. But don't forget, as soon as you start going over 1200, in any kiln, there is a price to play in the longevity of your elements. The life of your elements will come right down if you're firing regularly to these temperatures, and your electricity bill will go sky high because the kiln will use probably twice as much power to get to 1250 as it requires to get to 1000. So, if you want to go to these higher temperatures, always realise that there is a 
a price to pay.